What's going on guys? So check it out. This is a brand of e-bike you've likely never seen on my channel before. Um, I've never reviewed one of these before, even though they've reached out to me quite often to see if I would review their bikes. This is really cool. So this is a manufacturer called Hey Bike. They're actually a really popular manufacturer, and a lot of folks who watch my channel who have seen my e-bike reviews have been asking me to review Hey Bike and see how it compares against some of the more common bikes you see featured on my channel. So a lot of really cool specs here. Let's go over them and see what this thing's all about. Hang tight. I'll be right back. So first of all, I want to give a big shout out to the folks over at Haybike for providing this to me for review and evaluation. This is the Tyson model. They've actually reached out to me several times and offered to provide me an e-bike to compare against some of the other ones that I've reviewed and to give my opinion of. So uh, yeah, again, big shout out to Haybike for, uh, for sending this thing over for review and evaluation. Uh, let's go over some of the specs on it. First of all, 1200 watt peak motor. It is TUV safety certified. I don't exactly know what that is, but I know a lot of folks probably do. So if you know what that is, it is certified in that. Four to five hour charge time, 55 mile maximum range, 28 mile per hour top speed when unlocked, and I believe also through pedal assist. And it has a 400 pound capacity. It actually utilizes a unibody design with a magnesium frame. So you might actually think that means this thing is super lightweight. But in reality, it is actually pretty dang heavy. This thing weighs like 70 pounds, probably a little more than that, actually. Um, that said, it is one heck of a good-looking foldable e-bike. You know, you see a lot of e-bikes, they tend to have a lot of the same characteristics as each other. This one certainly has kind of the same overall shape, but the design to it and the cosmetic appeal of this thing is actually really, really good. It looks really nice. Um, I can honestly tell you the build quality, the fit and finish on it also feels really, really good. Another unique characteristic that you typically don't see in this type of folding bike is the fact that it's dual suspension. So it has a very kind of basic design to the rear suspension. But once we get on this thing and ride it around for a little while, we'll see how functional it is. That especially coming from someone who has some very, very high dollar professional e-mountain bikes that have very complex suspension with Fox, you know, Fox shocks and different Fox suspension up front. So again, to give you an opinion on this is gonna be pretty interesting because like I said, I have a lot of other bikes that I could use to kind of compare against this. Front suspension wise, it has an adjustable front fork, which is really nice. You basically set how firm you want it to be. I always love that feature on a fork, typically a feature you see on higher end shocks or higher end front suspension forks. So that's really nice. You know, overall, this is a really, really cool looking bike. I gotta admit, 48 volt, four amp fast charger. This is a class three e-bike. The front shock is a hydraulic suspension fork, so it is not a coil spring. Hydraulic is typically considered a better type, better quality. That's what you're gonna see in your higher end shocks. Here's a big one, it has hydraulic disc brakes. So the cost of hydraulic disc brakes have def definitely gone down if you're not going for you know one of the two main high end brands. But a lot of companies are still putting mechanical disc brakes on all of their e-bikes. So it's really good to see that it has hydraulic disc brakes as well. And again, that dual suspension is going to be really interesting to see how well it performs. Coming around this way, it has what appears to be, it's not a projector style, it's a reflector style front headlight, but it is kind of cool. The bike does have rear turn signal lights, which is also kind of nice, but they're so close together, I don't know how helpful they would really be if you're using them. One thing I did notice is has a horn. That is actually really, really nice. And to have a horn on a bike like this is really important because you can get going pretty quickly. And instead of your typical bell, this one honks through the front headlight assembly. So that is cool. Uh, the, the difference between this and a lot of the others is this whole unique look to the frame. It kind of has a carbon fiber appeal to it. Very, very good looking bike. Definitely has fat tires on it, which for a bike like this, the tire helps add to the suspension. It's gonna give you a cushier ride. And with it being as fat as it is, if you're going over sand, which we have a lot of out here, it's actually gonna give you more of a st stable ride. It's not gonna slip out from underneath you quite as easy. It has a seven speed, I believe it's a Shimano. Yep, seven speed Shimano system back here with the, I don't know, okay, so it's the Tourney uh, derailleur back here. And here's your seven speed cassette, single speed up front, which again is very common amongst e-bikes like this. 
but it looks really good. What do you guys think? Okay. And then you can adjust your pedal assist down as well. Let's get on this thing. So before we hop on board to see what it's all about, you can turn your power on right here. It has a really, really nice high contrast display. It's just really high definition too. The display is really, really nice. Okay, so here we go. I have it on power level three. I'm getting a little bit of chain slippage occasionally. I'm gonna have to figure out what that is. But it's not happening anymore. I can tell you that, see right there, I got a little bit of it. I can tell you that the, uh, the suspension really does help. Definitely smoothens things out. One thing to keep in mind is I'm wearing a lav mic right now. And secondly, I have horizon leveling stabilization on my GoPro. So even though everything looks really smooth, it's not as smooth as you might, it's not as smooth as you might think. Yeah, the uh, suspension in the back doesn't have a heck of a lot of travel but it certainly feels like it's smoothing things out. Feels kind of like a suspension seat post, to be honest. This bike picks up speed quick. Limiting factor here is the fact that it has only seven speeds. So by the time you get going as fast as the actual pedals will go, it feels as if you want a little bit more resistance on the pedals. This thing definitely hauls butt. It bucks a little bit because of the, the type of suspension it has. Let's go ahead and increase it to the fastest mode here. Again, I'm pedaling like really fast right now. The thing I really like about it though is it actually feels as if it goes through rougher terrain a bit more effortlessly than some of the others that I've ridden. The thumb throttle feels a little, uh, I'm going to say a little cheap. I don't think it'll break on me, but it definitely doesn't feel super robust. I don't know if it's made out of plastic or aluminum, but it feels like it's plastic, even though it may be aluminum. But yeah, this thing is fun. I mean, most e-bikes like this are fun. The fact that it's foldable, it is heavy, so don't, don't make foldable, you know, automatically assume, or don't assume foldable automatically means lightweight. Because this bike definitely has weight to it but it feels relatively nimble. So I can tell you that the power doesn't feel quite as linear as my electric bike, though it still feels very powerful. A lot of instant power, and it's a heck of a lot faster in terms of getting up to the maximum speed. I'm at 22 miles an hour right now. And yeah, you can definitely tell in that back suspension maxes out which is still nice to have back suspension period okay so let me give you my honest evaluation of this first of all i actually really like the fact that they have dual suspension here you know this bike is about a 1500 dollar bike and at that price point you get a lot for that considering the type of bike it is and what i mean by that is that it's a folding bike and it's an electric e-bike so Cool thing going on here um, is the fact that it has the dual suspension, it has the hydraulic disc brakes, and it has a really, really cool design to it. A very, very unique. And, you know, in the world of bikes, whether it's an e-bike or whether it's a standard bicycle, the reality is you want your bike to look good. You know, that's what it comes down to. A lot of people want a good looking bike, whether it's a beach cruiser, whether it's a mountain bike, whether it's an e-bike, you want it to have some type of an appeal that perhaps differentiates it from others in a good way. And I think they've done a fantastic job here. I love the fact that it has a hydraulic uh, front fork on it, which is really nice. Having a suspension fork is one thing, having a really plush hydraulic front fork, that's another thing. And this one feels really, really good. The back one definitely helps. You can absolutely tell that it helps, even though you can absolutely tell when it bottoms out. And if you go over anything really bumpy or rough, even my yard, which is actually kind of bumpy and rough, you can tell when it's bottoming out. So don't be surprised that if you get this, it helps. You love the way it feels and you hit a bump and you, you hear a clang in the back and that's essentially the, uh, the shock in the back bottoming out on you. Um, shifting is really, really smooth. Even though in seventh gear, I was getting a couple miss, misfires with my gear where the gear would skip a little bit. I'm 
going to try to fine tune it to try to work that out of it. But out of the box, that's how it was. Um, you can always fine tune a bicycle. And that's one of the cool things of bicycles is that I can probably get rid of that pretty quick by just adjusting the derailleur slightly and making a fine tune adjustment. I always recommend if you get a bike, whether you get it shipped to you, whether you get it from a bike store, whether you get it from Walmart, you take it to a professional bike shop and have them dial it in and tune it for you. Because the, the feeling you will have from a bike that's properly set up from a bike shop is going to be entirely different for the most part than a bike that you simply unbox, get on, and ride. Because there's a lot of fine-tuned adjustments that can be done to your brakes, to your derailleurs, to even your shifters, and things like that that can make it feel really good. And bike shops know how to do that really well. Uh, the computer display on this is really nice. It, it kind of separates your pedal assist buttons up and down pretty far apart from each other. Um, it's kind of confusing in a way, and the light right here isn't necessarily your headlight. Your headlight's right here. So if I turn that on, it's going to turn my front headlight on. I haven't had a chance to see how good that is in the dark, but we'll find out. And then it turns your backlight on, and then you have turn signals as well. So I can hit a turn signal there, which is cool, but again, it's so close together you might not be able to tell because of the way LEDs look in a camera, but it's so close together that some folks may not even know that it's a turn signal. So you definitely still want to use hand signals if you're going to be riding this on the road. I love the horn. That is really cool. And it's actually pretty loud. Depending on where you're at, it probably will be loud enough, but you would still probably want to let people know when you're about to pass by them. You have an auto feature here as well, which is really nice. And this essentially adjusts the throttle automatically for you. Plus you have your manual throttle, which is a thumb lever versus a twist like you see on some of them. And I do like the high resolution display. That is really nice. Uh, the grips are also very comfortable. I do like the grips. And I think that one of the reasons why this is as comfortable to ride as it is is because of that front suspension fork working really well. Again, hydraulic front fork, and you can fine tune it depending on how firm or stiff you want it to be. And that can be really important when you're riding as well. You wanna have your front fork tuned in specifically for what you're riding over. Very cool, it folds in half right here. You know, I think most people who have researched any type of folding e-bike probably know what it looks like folded. You basically drop your handlebars down, you fold this in half and it turns into this nice little semi-rectangular shape semi-portable bike and i say semi-portable because it's very compact but it is still really heavy and that weight by itself will probably keep you from wanting to lift it up to the back of a tailgate or you know the back of your suv or car that said i like the bike um, i would honestly say from an ergonomics perspective the way it looks it is a little nicer than some of the other bikes that I've reviewed in, from that standpoint. From uh, out of the box functionality, it's about the same. You still wanna fine tune it, take it to a bike shop, have them tweak it and make it really, really you know, put together well and make everything shift properly, make the brakes work really well. It wasn't very difficult to set up at all. There were a few more steps like having to put the axle through the front of your wheel there. It's not a quick release. So there's a, there's a few more steps to tightening it and getting it in place. Plus you mount the front little fender right there, and then you have to mount the light yourself. None of that stuff is, is already installed. Um, the pedals aren't installed either, but the kickstand is already on there. Uh, you insert the seat post inside. It's pretty simple, honestly. I think most folks could do it. But from a riding perspective, the rear suspension feels okay. It feels good. It's nice that it has it. Does not feel as linear as you might expect it on like a high-end e-mountain bike, but it's still nice and it's better than nothing. It, it definitely gives you kind of that, that pinching motion because you just have the hinge there and it's pinching up like this versus that real linear motion that makes the whole bike feel like it's compressing together, something you see on your higher end bikes. Anyways, I'd love to know what you think of this bike. I think it looks really good. It's probably one of the best looking folding e-bikes I've ever seen. Um, but overall, it's a cool bike. I, I definitely give it a thumbs up, but just again, just consider what you're getting into and some of the things that I mentioned about this bike. It is not a hardcore off-road bike, and I would definitely not take this on your more advanced trails. This is more of like a super, super basic trail e-bike, but really stick to the streets with it. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. I'll put a link in the description of this video if this is something you're interested in. I think from a quality perspective, it looks pretty top-notch and it feels pretty top-notch, so I'm pretty happy about that. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.